Okay, and welcome back to um, VivaTech EDF Discovery Arena. And yes, now is the time for a segment where we are going to be showcasing some robots. And this robot here goes by the name of Ricci. Ricci uses AI, image and voice recognition, as well as modulated robotics to interact with the world around him. Open source, easy to use and affordable. So that's a refreshing change for a robot. Ricci aims to bring powerful robotics as easily as possible to startups for prototyping, scientists for experimentation, and students for learning. All in one robot. Here to tell you more is Elsa Covella, Chief Marketing and Sales Officer of Ricci. Welcome to the stage, Elsa. Hello, everyone. What if you could go back in time about 40 years ago before personal computers were mainstream? What would you tell the people about the revolution that would be about to happen? What if I told you that a similar radical change is about to happen, not with personal computers, but with personal robots? We've all seen that recently, Robots have become very frequently used in the fields of industry and logistics. We've all seen videos of robots assembling cars in Tesla factories or moving around parcels in Amazon warehouses. Well, in the years to come, it is um, in our everyday life, especially in the fields of service and personal assistance, that robots are going to become very useful. For example, the elderly or disabled people will be able to live more independently. Daily chores such as tidying up, cleaning, uh, doing the dishes, cooking, whatever, will be fully automated. Companies that provide services will be using robots to perform tedious and repetitive tasks, thus saving their workforce for more qualified tasks. All in all, we believe that robots are going to become the next tool that will profoundly change our life. But to get there, we need to invent a new generation of robots that can adapt to our everyday environment. These robots, they need to be safer, much safer, they need to be versatile, they need to be flexible so that they can really adapt to the way we live and the way they will interact around us. Mostly, they really need to be very intelligent so that they can adapt to the chaos that reigns in our everyday human-centric environment. And I'm telling you, having that kind of robot is much, much more complicated than putting robots in factories. In the recent years, we've seen that major changes, major um, progress has been made in critical technologies related to AI and robotics. And we know that companies and businesses are wanting to use that, to use that progress, to use it into the services they provide. But these companies are facing a dilemma because they don't have any suitable robotic platform in order to develop their own application. These companies may be in the food industry, they may be in healthcare, they may be in retail, for instance. So, um, of course, there are some uh, available solutions on the markets. For instance, you have some social robots that exist that are affordable, but they are very limited in the tasks that they can perform. For instance, with interact interacting with people or manipulating objects. There are also social robots that are much more advanced, but it comes at a price. Usually ranges between 250,000 to 1 million euros. And those robots are mostly used by uh, research labs. So you might say, why don't these companies, th those businesses, why don't they build their own robot from scratch? Well, it's very complicated to do you uh, would require teams of experts. Um, it takes a very long time. 
and a very long R&D project around it. And uh, it costs around a million euro at least. And you're not really guaranteed any result in the end. So these companies, these businesses, they are stuck, right? And they cannot join the robotics revolution. So that's why we created this little guy here, whose name is Ricci. <laughs> so Ricci is a humanoid, open source, programmable robot. Ricci has two bio-inspired arms that can reproduce the same movements as human arms. It has grippers that you can see here that uh, allow for a very easy object manipulation. Uh, Ricci also has a very expressive head uh, which is mounted on a, on a neck joint that we developed at Pond Robotics, which reproduces the same movement as a human head. As you can see, Richie is super expressive. It has antennas that can convey some emotions. So right now, Richie is pretty happy to be here. <laughs> um, and then under this cute stripy t-shirt, um, lies a lot of electronics, but there is uh, a microphone and a speaker so that Richie can also communicate using sound. And there are dedicated microprocessors for uh, int artificial intelligence. So um, basically, Richie is pretty great at interacting with people and manipulating objects. Here we go. So Ricci can be deployed in our everyday environment. You can probably imagine seeing here how uh, uncanny he is. This is a robot, but you could tell that he would really adapt in our everyday life. Here are some examples of Ricci being used in very basic environments, such as serving coffee, meeting, uh, greeting visitors, um, handing out a mask. Um, and drawing stuff, for, instance, for example. But because Ricci is very versatile, uh, sky is the limit in terms of the application that you can do with Ricci. So Ricci is initially meant to run autonomously uh, by using any kind of application that is programmed into Ricci. But Ricci is also available with teleoperation using virtual reality. So what does that mean? That means that Ricci, for instance, a Ricci could be here. From the other side of the world, the, a person could be controlling Ricci using VR. Right now, this person is not on the other side of the planet, but is right here. This is my colleague, Pierre, and he's teleoperating Ricci using um, a VR headset and VR uh, controllers. So how does it work? Well. We, Pollen Robotics, we provide Ricci, which is our ready-to-use humanoid platform. Um, on top of this, we also act as an external R&D team for customers that need Ricci to be prototyped specifically on their applications. The aim being to deploy Ricci, to deploy fleets of Ricci um, into these customers' markets in the coming years. So we're currently a team of six people. First here, you can see Mathieu and Pierre, who are the two co-founders of Pollen Robotics. They created a company in 2016, and they are both uh, former researchers at the INRIA in Bordeaux. Um, I joined the company in 2019, and I have a 10-year experience uh, in international markets, in the healthcare and new technology sector. And we also have a world-class um, R&D team which is composed of Simon, Gael, and Augustin. And not to forget Marcel, who is our chief laziness officer and who basically spends most of his time just taking naps at the office. So Ricci was launched at CES 2020. That was right before COVID exploded in the world. Um, so it's been a year and a half that Ricci has been out there. And it's been sold in around 15 countries that are located pretty much everywhere in the world. Um, among our customers, we have universities such as the Ecole Polytechnique, uh, the APFL in Switzerland, and companies such as 7-Eleven, Accenture, and even one of the GAFA, but I cannot tell you the name of. So what our, what our, uh, our objectives, sorry. Well, in the short term, 
we want to find more customers, more collaborations, so that we can prototype Richie on very specific applications related to services and personal assistant. Our midterm objective is to go into the deployment of Richie into the markets of those customers. And our long-term objective is for Richie to become the benchmark humanoid platform for services and personal assistant robotics. If you two think that robots are going to become the next tool that will profoundly change our life, come and have a chat with us. We are located just there on the robot park. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Elsa. Thank you, Thank you for, for your applause. Yes, yeah, so we just have one minute, so I just wanted to ask yeah. you a question. So sure. this, this is, um, so it, this technology, um, this application, it can be adapted for a, a wide range of s scenarios. Is it really, I mean, could it push remote working into a completely new direction? Because I'm, I'm looking at this thing, I'm looking at the service industry, uh, restaurants, bars, but what about driving? You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, really, sky's the limit in terms of what Richie can do because using the teleoperation that opens huge new horizons. And so you were talking about uh, different services. So we could imagine Richie being used uh, as a maintenance tool if a person cannot be there to check on some machines, for instance, uh, within a factory, then they can have Richie to be placed there and to do that for them. Richie is equipped with two cameras. That's uh, f something I forgot to tell you. Right. Uh, it's equipped with two cameras. Whatever, whatever Richie sees is what you're going to see in the VR headset. So it's pretty convenient. OK. <laughs> All right. And, uh, I mean, what about future versions? I mean, uh, there's one thing working you know, in services or, or in factories. But what about surgery, for example? Could it happen one day? Well, that could be one, <laughs> but uh, it would be a medical device, which is a whole other uh, difficulty to, to do. Um, right now, we're looking at getting Richie. The next version is going to be more stable, more robust. So it's going to be able to be used on uh, applications that are maybe a little harder, a bit more repetitive. So that's our plan. OK. Well, listen, thank you very much. Thank you. Elsa from Richie. Thank you. All right, we are going to just have a little changeover uh, of the scene area before our next uh, guys turn up. So give us a couple of minutes and we'll be right back.